Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining virtually. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, before I start, I would like um, to express once more my congratulations to the LA Galaxy organization. Um, we did that already on Saturday on the pitch and also by a text message, uh, but they, they played an amazing year. Uh, they deserve to win this trophy. When you win four playoff rounds, we only won three. When you score two goals in the final, we scored one. Um, then um, you deserve this trophy. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't have the best first 20 minutes uh, this season. But that sport, uh, as a sportsman, you need to respect and accept the defeat. And uh, you need to shake uh, the opponent's hand. That's what we did. And so once more, congratulations to the Galaxy. Um, yeah, I wanted to start with uh, saying thank you, uh, first and foremost, to our unbelievable fans, supporter groups, Red members for their support during their entire year. Uh, definitely with the highlights, um, the game in Queens, when our fans took over control uh, of City Field. Um, this was impressive. impressive. This was amazing. Players were talking about that after the game. Uh, at City Field, and definitely having 3,000 fans with us in Los Angeles was uh, remarkable. Thank you very much uh, for your support, and we're already looking forward today to seeing our fans and supporters, uh, Red members, again uh, next season. Um, I also want to thank you, the media, for uh, being with us the whole year. Uh, supporting us, following us, spreading out the news all over the world. Good news, but also bad news. That's, that's part of the business. So <laughs> thank you very much uh, for being with us. Um, I want to thank Red Bull, our owner, fami owner families, and especially I want to thank Oliver Minslav, uh, who put so much time and energy into this club over the last 12 years. Uh, his support is amazing. And uh, he gave us the opportunity to sign a player like uh, Emil Forsberg last year. And um, yeah, therefore, thank you very much, Oliver, for your support. We really appreciate that. I also want to thank Mario Gomez, the technical director of Red Bull Soccer. His support throughout the whole year was amazing. He came over for every playoff game. Um, his support on a weekly, daily basis is outstanding. So uh, thank you, Mario, for that. I want to thank our staff here at Red Bull Arena. Uh, what they have achieved this year is, uh, yeah, incredible. We have the highest attendance since 2018. Uh, they created a stadium show, which is uh, top class in this league. Uh, they worked so hard uh, throughout the whole year. Uh, the, the way they supported us through the playoffs, all the organization behind the scenes uh, was incredible. So thank you to all our colleagues here at uh, Red Bull Arena. Big thank you goes to my partner, Mark de Grand Prix, our general manager. He's an incredible leader, amazing GM, and uh, yeah, nothing than a wonderful person. Uh, so thank you, Mark, for your support. Um, we want to thank our outstanding staff at the uh, training facilities at Melanie Lane, the academy, our second team, our first team staff, our scouting department, medical department. Uh, we have a, a wonderful group of people together, and not, not only experts on their field, but also wonderful human beings. Um, big thank you goes to my partner, our sporting director, Julian de Guzman. Uh, what, a, what a great guy. Uh, he was working so hard this year. Uh, got all the, the, the departments at Medley Lane together, supporting the coaches, the players, the staff. Uh, he did an amazing job. And thank you to the gentleman next to me, uh, <laughs> Sandro, and his, his coaching team. Uh, man, what a, what a job they did. Uh, they turned the page. Uh, incredible job since day one when he arrived uh, here. He raised the standards um, around the first team, around the second team, the academy. He connected with the second team. Uh, with the academy um, incredibly. And um, we implemented a winning culture into this club. And uh, this, was, this was crucial for this, this run, 
this final run of the season. And uh, thank you, Sandro, for that. Thank you. I also want to thank our players because without our players, uh, we would be nothing. Because at the end of the day, these 11 gentlemen on the pitch, they need, they need to do the job. We can do whatever we want, even Sandro. Uh, they are the ones uh, who need to do the job and they did the job. Uh, what an incredible group we have. Uh, great players, experienced players. Uh, then we have this amazing core group of American players, uh, which are so important uh, on and off the field. Um, we have an outstanding group of talented players from the age of 15 to 22, 23, highly talented players. Some of them coming uh, through our academy system, RB2, some of them through our scouting department. Um, they did an, an amazing job too, and together this is nothing than a, a wonderful group of players and, uh, and human beings. And, let me please uh, say a few words about, about the season. Um, I would like to divide this season into three parts. There's the first part um, right from the start, I would say, until Leagues Cup. <coughs> um, there's a second part uh, from Leagues Cup uh, till the end of regular season, and then the final run uh, in the playoffs is the third part. And, I, and I, I think Sandro would not disagree that we showed three phases. Uh, first phase was a beautiful one, attractive football. Uh, and you can see the statistics in terms of expected goals. We had been top of the Eastern Conference uh, on the same level then into Miami. Uh, but when, when it came to execution, you could see that there's a slightly difference between uh, our friends uh, from Florida and us. Uh, they were a bit better in front of the net. Um, and but only the second game. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, talking, I'm talking about the whole period from okay. February till okay. July. You can see that okay. they scored more goals yeah. than, than we did, although we yeah. had the same amount of, of, of uh, top chances. And that's why we tied too many games, to be honest. Uh, we should have easily have 8, 10, 12 points more in July than we, than we, than we had. Um, but it is what it is. We had been unbeaten at home. Um, and although there was a period in June, beginning of July, when we missed Emil uh, because of his injury, we missed Luis being at the Euros for Scotland, we missed Carlos playing uh, for Paraguay at the Copa America, we transferred uh, Frankie Amaya to Toluca without having an immediate replacement. So there were some difficulties, but the team was fighting and uh, we played well, we got some results, we beat Cincinnati at home, we got a good point in Denver, so that was okay. And then there's the second part, when we went into the, to the Leagues Cup, uh, we lost uh, two time, yeah, I mean, it's a penalty shootout. This is, has something to do with, with, with luck or bad luck. We lost two games on penalties, got knocked out. And then uh, there was a period when we lost a little bit the momentum after Leagues Cup. There was a break, we came back and didn't re really perform anymore like we did before. We lost in total uh, three games at home um, yeah, games, defeats, which really hurt it. And uh, we only got one win in Toronto. And, that w and then we had this match day 34 with the home game against the Columbus crew. And I think um, it was kind of, uh, I don't want to call it luck, but it, wa it was good to play the crew at home on match day 34. We saw what's working against them, but we definitely saw what's not working against them. <laughs> And then I have to give a lot of credit to our coaches. And then uh, this is part three. I have to give a lot of credit to our coaches. Uh, they found the key how to play uh, Columbus Crew and, and how to beat them. And I think these two games against Columbus Crew, which is, by the way, for me, and for me personally, and it's only my small personal opinion, for me, Columbus Crew is the best team in the league. And we beat them twice. And this was incredible. And then something, something happened in the team. There was a belief that we can win knockout games. And this, this club hasn't won too many knockout games in the last six years. And there was a belief and a togetherness uh, that we can do that. And, uh, and then we played, I mean, we played like Italy or Germany in the good old World Cup days. We found a way to win games. And we, we won in New York City, we won in Orlando. And this, was, this is, was incredible. Unfortunately, we came a bit short in the final. 
but that can happen. You could see that maybe for some players it was the first final, but there is definitely a hunger um, to reach that again and, and to play finals again. And uh, I want to close with saying thank you to everybody. I think this was a good season, but the season was especially the foundation of future success. And I am more than sure we will have success. And uh, we will we will win trophies with this club. Thank you. Thank you, Jochen. We will now take questions. First, we'll start in the room, and then we'll take a couple over Zoom. First thing I saw was Joe. We'll start with Joe. Thank you, Joe. Guys, I appreciate the time. Jochen, just going off of what you said about the three phases of the season, perhaps the inconsistency in getting to a final, how do you approach this off season? Is it one of these things where, OK, the roster that we have, just needs a tweak or two, or is there maybe one or two really more bigger pieces that need to come in to sort of complete this championship puzzle? Thanks. That, that's a very good question. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I mean, we it's, it's a permanent process that we analyze the situation, that we analyze our roster. And you can see how much a player like Emil Forsberg was helping our group on and also off the pitch. And... Um, and I was talking about this amazing group of talented players, young players. But from time to time, they need a little bit of experience on the side, some guidance. And this is what we want to add to our roster. Uh, a little bit more quality, a little bit more experience, a little bit more leadership. Um, and this is because we are convinced that you, you need that in this, in this critical, crucial moments of a season in these big games. And um, this is our plan um, to add that to our, to our roster in the off season. Next, go to George. <clears throat> uh, guys, first, congrats on a great season. Last time we were here, we were talking about a new coaching change and that the first round wasn't enough. And you've done amazing to take this team all the way over there, especially during the season where you mentioned before there was a lot of draws and stuff like that. Um, the most important game of the season, one of the clutchest players in Reyes uh, warmed up and then he wasn't there. There were reports that he was sick. Um, to me, I kind of looked like uh, he should have been playing no matter what what was happening. Uh, from your end, what was happening with Reyes? Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> we were also very surprised. and. Uh, when we when we came in after our warm up in our locker room and uh, he felt sick and uh, he it was not possible to play and uh, directly in the starting lineup and we had only i don't know 3 4 5 minutes time then to make the decision and then we tried everything the whole medical they tried everything then uh, but it was not possible and then the, at the end i have to take the decision and also the responsibility and then it was clear okay we have to bring directly Noah Eile without warm-up um, to in, in our starting lineup, and for sure, it's not the best preparation uh, in the locker room for the big, big final. But uh, the situation was like this. So, and then at the end, um, it's also not so easy then for Noah Eile to come in uh, from the mental side directly to be in from the mental side to be ready without warm-up. But he made it then also like the whole team after 20 minutes, 15 minutes, and also a great job. And this was the situation. Um, before the game in our locker room. Next, we're going to Jokin, I mean, you just spoke about the transfers that might be coming in or crucial pieces that will be coming in. We heard a lot of rumors about uh, Marcelo Morales and uh, Eric Maxim uh, Chupomoting. Can you speak a little bit about those two or any others that yeah, me, could me be are. in the rumors? Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, I cannot because <laughs> there are still rumors. But I, 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 honestly, I heard this name of, of that strike. I heard that before in my life, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I cannot talk about that. <laughs> cannot talk about him. But Next. you will see. Next, we go to Michael. Coach, after the game, when you said you were going to take the next two days to, you know, go through your emotions, the players are going to go through your emotions, you were going to you know, drink with your players. <laughs> just, just talk about, it's been 48, 72 hours. Uh, what have you been thinking about? What have you been thinking about from this game, just processing everything, your first season? Is there a clear picture right now, or do you think that you're going to need a little more time before next season? 
Yeah, uh, when we are talking about, uh, for sure, about the big picture, and Jochen, uh, he said everything exactly with uh, the same words, what I feel, to be honest, with all the people around the club, in the club, uh, from the sports side, uh, these three periods in the season, and I would also divide in the same same periods, like uh, beginning of the season was very well till uh, until League's Cup, then a difficult part, difficult part uh, after League's Cup, and... Uh, with some reasons, of course, but also with our performance, with our quality on the field was not good enough in these games. But then our turnaround was unbelievable, it was uh, great to, um, to see these guys uh, to come in this atmosphere to win something, first of all, and to believe in that. And for sure, it was a big advantage when we are when you are playing against Columbus, the best team for me as well. And when you are playing and you beat them on the road the first game, then the second in uh, very emotional to save the penalties. So that's great. And uh, from the sports side, it was amazing, was great. And also to feel the difficult moments, not only that's only going in one direction, it's also necessary, and so, of course. And then you played the final um, last Saturday and uh, the preparation was very well. Um, the event without sports, it was great. Very, very emotional before to, to see, to feel the atmosphere about the final MLS Cup final. This was for me great great event and uh, especially after the game for sure we were very disappointed we were we were also sad um, about uh, the result about uh, the first 20 minutes after that what I said uh, directly in the press conference great uh, reaction great performance of the whole team of the whole group and uh, after that and I'm this person to be honest and I'm this character more to think about okay um, to look forward, to look to the next uh, opportunity, to look to the next challenge. And that's also a challenge when you lose a the final then, um, to feel this more like a channel and not to feel like, wow, that was the biggest chance and uh, hopefully this uh, final will, will uh, in the next season to come or something like that. And for me it was directly the feeling, okay, we lost, we are disappointed, we are sad, we are angry, but now to look directly forward, okay, that's experience in life, that's experience in our career, for me as a head coach, for everyone here in the club, for the players, for our group. So, And this is what we need, um, this experience sometimes. And uh, in, in our, in, when we start our work here and uh, we were talking a lot of time, we want to, to, to write and to make our own story. Uh, and now it's the, the first chapter is over in our first season. It's not the best happy end, I would say, but... So, Second chapter is beginning next uh, season, mid of January, and then to prepare everything, to prepare everything, to analyze, of course, the first season, every part, pre-season, the first part, till League's Cup. This is our job, to be very professional in that, to analyze, and then to give the right answer, for sure, for sure, and this was directly our feeling, we want to come uh, back and to, to play the next final, to have this situation uh, with all together, with the supporters this from the office, from the facility, our families, that's great. And this was the best part, to be honest, to see all together on our last day uh, in, this, in this year. And this was great. The result was not great. The celebration was top, to be honest, with some drinks with the players, with the whole stuff. And this is what we need and now to prepare and to believe. And I'm very excited then for the for the next season. Now we need holidays to come down, to analyze what I said, and then to start on uh, 18th, I think, it's the medical check on January, and then to start clear direction all together to create the atmosphere with maybe some new players, a new group, and then to be ready in our first training session, then to prepare for our regular season and then to continue, to continue every time, to continue our process, our development, and then as the second chapter starts, and then we will see how the end from the second chapter is done. Next, we had a question. Good afternoon, Jokin. Good afternoon, Good Sandro. Afternoon. Congratulations on a fantastic season, and I can speak on behalf of all the supporters that are Thank really you. happy to have you guys um, in this organization. Now, with that being said, uh, obviously, there's a possibility that perhaps John Tolkien could leave the club. Have you received any offers from any clubs? Would he be um, leaving the club this season, the next season, and uh, any other offers that you may have received for other players? Um, and for Sandro, um, <clears throat> obviously this was a successful playing style in the playoff. Um, do you see this as a permanent structure that you can use throughout the season and for the next playoff series? Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm not well known for talking a lot about rumors and uh, secret proposals, so I need to disappoint you on, on that topic. But I can tell you what, I mean, this is, this is not a secret. And, and we had the exit interviews with the players yesterday. And uh, without asking for uh, John Tolkien's permission, I can tell you what, we, what, we, what we've spoken with him. And I said, listen, I want you to retire here at Red Bull Arena. And we put number 47 uh, uh, under the roof. Uh, but I know that this is not going to happen. With your quality, with your ambitions, I know that you will play in Europe. When the day will come, I don't know. It has to be the right club. It has to be the, the, the right proposal. It, it has to be a fit for every, every party. But then it's clear that you will go one day to, to Europe. If it will be in January, if it will be in July 25, it will, if it will be after he played the World Cup uh, for US men's national team, I don't know. But the, the time will come. The most important is that he is focused on his, on his game here. Um, and then it it will be without a question mark that he will go one day uh, to Europe. Yeah, and when I can answer also the first question, so we are very open, very clear with the J. M. I. Tolkien, and uh, it was the same when I when I remembered uh, our our first kind of conversation which I had with him uh, in California in uh, in our in our second training camp, and we had as well. A very clear conversation, and we are very open from both sides. So, and then we have to look, and uh, and yes, also to 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 create a good feeling for for his career themselves. So that's that's the situation. And the second part is for sure when we are talking about our structure, though, and uh, that was different than in our regular season. Most of the time in our regular season, we played with uh, two center backs. So we start in uh, against Columbus with three center backs. I would be crazy when I'm thinking about, okay, now we, we are going back and we are playing only with two center backs, but nothing changed in our principles and it's only the structure. So, and we, we, we played very aggressive with three center backs and we want to play um, in our in our forward defending, very aggressive, very intensive, and uh, the the same principle when we when we played in the regular season uh, with with our two centre backs. So that's the same in our built up situation when you play with two centre backs. Sometimes you want also to build up with three players. So that's the same then with three centre backs. Nothing 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 changed with our principles. We have to improve um, our principles, especially with the ball but not to lose our basics. That's important when we start the preseason as well and in, in, in January. Uh, the basics is every time when you want to build up something with your whole team, with your whole group, is first of all to play very intensive with the highest energy in your defense behavior. And then on top, we have to improve, for, of course, then uh, for sure, then uh, some, some moments with the ball. Depends, so two center backs, three center backs. But uh, what I can say is when I'm thinking about the preseason, we will have some games friendly games that we play with two center backs and of course then also with three center backs. We'll go back to Joe. Jochen, understanding that Lewis Morgan has a team option in his contract for the 2026 season, would there be perhaps a level of interest between, I guess, both parties if he were to approach you guys about potentially working out a, a longer term deal? Would there be interest in maybe keeping him yeah, I mean, first of all, Luis... A lot of questions here with the contract here. Yeah, 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 it's important. It's important. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, Luis played a, uh, an incredible season. His comeback was uh, outstanding. Uh, he was working so hard in the rehab in 2023, and uh, he didn't have a preseason with, yeah. with the team. And the way he came back was incredible. He made it to the Euros for Scotland. Um, and uh, it was a long season, long season for him. You could see that a little bit at the end. But um, he, he's an important player, but he's also an important member of our team. He's important in the locker room. The energy he brings to the to the training facilities every day is is, is outstanding. Um, and so, for sure, we want to keep him. As, I don't want to say it as long as possible, but as long as he's uh, able to play on this level, so he will not get a 15-year contract. Uh, but for sure, um, um, yeah, we are. We will have the conversations at the right time, you know. 
We will go to Zoom for our last couple of questions. We'll go to Mark Fishkin. Oh, Mark is here. Hey, folks. Um, it's great to see you. Um, congrats on a fantastic season, which really tremendous. Thank you. Uh, been, we, we talked about um, bringing in their experienced players into the side. And I'm kind of curious how you balance um, experience with kind of the mission that Red Bull has had over the last 10 years to really be a developer of youth talent. Can you talk about how you are, are thinking about the social leader? Uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Thank you for the question. I mean, this is an ongoing process um, to think about uh, what is needed uh, to to uh, to bring a successful team team on the pitch. And as I mentioned before, uh, we have a, a big group of highly talented uh, players, and um, we will not change our principle. We will not change our style of play. You will always see that this is a Red Bull team on the pitch, always on the front foot, being being aggressive, playing forward, uh, attacking team. Uh, but as, as I said before, um, from time to time, it helps to have a little bit experience on the side, in the team, in the locker room, in every training session. Players uh, who proved, who showed their quality uh, on the highest level before. And um, and that's that's what we do, and this is, is is nothing against our principles, or we still have these these amazing young players. So we we bring them together, and I think this is um, this is important for future success. Everyone, we have time for two more questions. First, we'll go to Gary Redman, and then we'll finish up with Daniel Rebane. Gary, have the floor. <clears throat> Congratulations on a terrific season. Um, you certainly did turn the page uh, as we get in the beginning of the season. I just have one question in regards to the organization. Your team made the finals for the first time in 16 years. What's it going to take uh, for you to get back there in short order? This is one of the things that the supporters are going to be asking about. That's an easy question. You need to qualify for the playoffs, and then you need to win three playoff rounds. <laughs> that's that's yeah, as simple as it is. And we'll finish up with Daniel Reban. I mean, just I mean, I don't want to be don't want to be too funny. No, it mean I mean, we knew what was helping this year uh, to make this run in the playoffs, and uh, and for sure we want to repeat that. At the end of the day, it's the playoffs. In the first round, you have two or three games, and then it's a, it's a game uh, uh, of ni ninety or one hundred twenty minutes, and Anything can happen in, in, in a soccer match in 90 or 120 minutes. So, um, but we we know what it needs uh, 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 to 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 reach that stage of the of the competition. Uh, but it's also it's also clear it's going to be a tough competition again to to reach the playoffs. Uh, there will be teams bouncing back, Atlanta, uh, Philadelphia Union, Craig Berhalter in Chicago, definitely they will make the playoffs, no doubt about that. Other teams will come back. Uh, so it's um, it's going to be a tough season and the, and the first goal again will be to qualify for the, for the playoffs, which will be difficult enough. And then in the knockout games, yeah, you have to, you have to be ready like we had been this year, but it's, it, it's, a, it's another challenge and it's going to be very, very difficult. And we'll finish up with Daniel Reban. How you guys doing? Congrats on the season uh, again. And um, my question for, for Jochen is about the, the goalkeeper room for next year. Obviously, uh, you guys re-signed Ryan Mayer to a, a three-year deal. Uh, you picked up the option for Carlos Cornell. And then also you see AJ Marcucci coming back from loan from, from Finland. But you First, just talk so about AJ's yeah, performances in, in Finland and how you kind of see that goalkeeper room going forward next year. Yeah, I said this yesterday to to AJ in 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 the exit interview. Um, I remember the conversation we had in July when he was unhappy that he he wasn't playing, and we we made the decision to send him out on uh, out on loan. And we were talking to several clubs. Thanks God, we found the right club in Finland, and he did an amazing job. Uh, I mean, he played 50% of the games, 
and he got nominated uh, to the top three goalies of the first division in Finland. Uh, he helped the team, which was playing against relegation, uh, to nearly reach uh, um, a Euro European Cup competition. And he, he, he played an amazing uh, season in, in, in Finland and he showed how good, how good he is. And we had the conversation with him uh, yesterday and, and, and now we need to see, I, I can't tell you right now, uh, what will happen in, uh, in the next few weeks or months. We will see, but we know that uh, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a strong goalkeeper and he has shown that he can definitely play in MLS, no doubt about that. He can be a number one goalkeeper, very good number one goalkeeper in MLS. Everyone, apologies. We'll take two more additional questions. First, we'll go to James Burrell, and then we'll finish up with Daniel Feuerenstein. James, you have the floor. Thank you so much for your time, guys. Congrats uh, on the season. Uh, my question is for Sandro. Um, talking about bringing in experienced players and the impact that, that a player like Forsberg had this year, in the final, three homegrown players from New Jersey start and two uh, Long Island natives. Well, what can you say about the homegrown nature of this club and, and the academy projects <clears throat> that the Red Bulls have in your first year as a manager? Thank you. Yeah, that's... It's very important to have all these guys in uh, in our roster. Not only to think about for sure to have some experience in our roster, like Emil Forsberg, how he leads the team, how he feels the responsibility for the whole group. But then you have also your homegrown talents like uh, Danny Edelman, Peter Stroud, J. M. I. Tolkien, like these guys. And this is also necessary. So and 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 then. Some American guys um, with experience in the league, with the MLS league, and and, yeah, and like Emil from from international, from Europe, with with top quality. This is this is the kind how we want to build up our roster, and it's not only a part of experience or young player. At the end, it's quality. At the end, it's quality, and to to show the quality every day in every training session, and to be very professional, and also to create the atmosphere every day in our facility. That's that's the key for us. How we want to build up, and that's the um, identity from our organization. That's the identity from our club to to develop, and also to develop not only the young players, it's also to develop the the experienced players like Emil Forsberg to to play uh, with with our group, with our young players that they are playing and that they also feel the responsibility to play and to win all together. And that's it. That's the key for us, how we want and how we see um, we can be successful with the whole roster and all our guys, all our players and our team. And we'll finish up with Daniel Forenstein. You, know, you just to piggyback on what James asked the question with the home runs, uh, um, sporting... Uh, sporting director of LA Galaxy, Will Coots, gave your club so much praise uh, going through your playoff run. Uh, just how much quality do you have in your scouting staff to find these players, not just in New York, New Jersey, but within the metro area of this area to find these quality players and integrate them with the, you, the Red Bull way to play? Yeah, I mean, since years, our, our academy... Uh, uh, staff members are doing an amazing job recruiting these players, developing these players, preparing them for for uh, RB2 and and then for our first team and we are we are really proud of our academy and to have so many homegrown players, players from the New York, uh, New Jersey area uh, on our roster and uh, on the field and that creates this this uh, amazing connection between the team and the fans uh, to have these players uh, on our team uh, who really feel the club and uh, who, who love this club and, uh, and we are proud of that and, and when I say we add maybe one or two experienced players to this roster that also means uh, we stick to our philosophy to develop young players, to integrate them into our team, to give them playing minutes and to develop them and uh, we are proud of that and we will continue to do so. And that's the reason why Red Bull is investing also in our new training facilities uh, um, to, to continue to, to, to go that pathway and uh, to give these young talents wings.